Hey guys, it's Miss Miklos, and today we are starting chapter 9, um, which covers conic sections, which we're really used to, and then it also gets into polar graphs, which is something totally different for us. So um, to make our lectures a little bit quicker today, um, I am splitting this up. So today in this lecture, we are only talking about circles. In the next lecture, we will only talk about parabolas. And even though we've done conic sections before, there's a lot of new info that we're going to be learning this chapter. So that's why I think it's helpful to kind of take it one conic section at a time. So with a circle, obviously this is a circle. Um, the definition is it is the set of all points x, y in a plane that are equidistant from a fixed point, the center, which is h, k. The distance that they are away from the center is what we call r, which is the radius. So I want to start with actually talking about a few characteristics of a circle. Just by looking at an equation, how can I tell that something is a circle? And you guys may remember this from last year, but it's, I think it's important for us to hear it again. So there are three things that allow us to know that something is a circle. First, both x and y need to be squared. Secondly, we need to have addition between those squared terms. And lastly, x squared and y squared need to have the same coefficient. So today, obviously, it's super easy because everything is a circle. However, when we move to our quizzes, when we move to our test, things are going to be mixed up, so we need to be able to differentiate in order to find the correct characteristics. The standard form of the equation of a circle is x minus h squared and I should say the quantity x minus h squared plus the quantity y minus k squared equals r squared. When we're dealing with this, the center is h, k, which are going to be the opposite of these two values, and our radius is the square root of r squared. So um, just a quick note, the reason why we just do the square root and not plus or minus square root is because we know the radius is a distance, it's a length, so it has to be positive. So a negative radius does not exist. Um, these are the only values that we will see numbers for. H and, not H, X and Y will be variables in every single equation. Okay, now sometimes we will have a center of zero, zero. If I substituted zero in for H and for K, it would give me x squared plus y squared equals r squared. So if we just see x squared or y squared by itself, we know that we're in good shape and we do not need to do any additional work in order to determine what our center is. So today we're going to be doing a few things with this. Example number one, this is something that um, we really haven't spent much time doing in previous courses. It says we need to find the standard of equation of a circle. It tells us a point on the circle, and it tells us what the center is, and we need to write the standard form of the equation of the circle. So I'm going to start here by just writing x minus h squared plus y minus k squared equals r squared, because that's our general equation for a circle. Now, the information that we know that's always going to be true for this equation is that the center is negative 2, negative 3. So I'm going to do x minus negative 2 squared plus y minus negative 3 squared equals r squared. So when I simplify that, I really get the quantity x plus 2 squared plus the quantity y plus 3 squared equals r squared. So we're in good shape. We have filled in h and k. Now we need to go ahead and fill in r squared. Okay, these are the three variables we always need to fill in. We know that it's totally fine to have x and y in our final answer. x and y are going to vary because those are all the solutions to this equation. Notice I'm not calling this a function because if I look, let me get out my handy dandy lightsaber. There we go. If we did a vertical line test, we would see that it does not pass, so I know that there's no way that that can be a function. Okay, so there must be some way for me to figure out what r squared is, so I'm, I notice that they give us another piece of information. They tell us that the point 1, 4 is a solution. So I'm going to go ahead and substitute 1 in for x, 
and four in for y because if something is a solution, that means that it is making a true statement when we substitute it into the equation. Given that, with this information, I'm only left with r squared. So I'm going to get 3 squared plus 7 squared equals r squared. So when I do that math, I get 58 equals r squared. Now notice, we don't care what r is. We just want to go ahead and write x plus 2 squared plus y plus 3 squared equals whatever r squared was, which in this case would be 58. Okay, so just to make sure that this works, we notice negative 3, negative 2 is the center we would get from looking at this particular equation. Also, if I substituted 1, 4 in here, I should get 58 as our solution. So that's one type of problem that we're going to be doing today. You guys will notice we're really um, spending like a little bit of time on each section um, because a lot of this is review for us. So number two tells us to sketch a circle. Okay, we're given the equation and we need to identify its center and its radius. So first of all, looking at this, I know it's a circle because both x and y are squared. They are added together and they have the same coefficient. Now, what stands out to me is that this is not in the correct form, okay? In fact, looking at this, I notice we have an extra x and I have an extra y. When we have an extra x and y, that reminds me that we need to complete the square. So, I'm going to group my x terms together in a parenthesis. I'm going to group my y terms together in a parenthesis and I'm moving that constant over to the other side. So, this is a skill that we did a lot um, back in Algebra 2, and hopefully you guys kind of remember it. But in order to determine what I'm adding inside here, I'm going to take this middle coefficient, so I'm going to do this off to the side, I'm going to take negative 6, I'm going to divide it by 2 and square it. So negative 6 divided by 2 is negative 3, negative 3 squared is 9. So I'm going to balance this by adding 9 to both sides of the equation. Now with our y's over here, I'm going to take this negative 2 and divide it by 2 and square it. Negative 2 divided by 2 is 1, 1 squared is 1, so that's what I'm adding to both sides. So now we're going to go ahead and simplify this, and you guys may have learned last year, there's actually a shortcut. This is a perfect square trinomial. And we know that in order to factor this, it's always going to be, since this is x squared, it's going to be x. And this number is going to be half of this middle coefficient. So in this case, it's going to be x minus 3 squared. The reason why this works, negative 3 plus negative 3 is negative 6. Negative 3 times negative 3 is positive 9. Using the same logic, when I factor y squared minus 2y plus 1, I get y minus 1 squared, and when I add all these numbers together on the right-hand side, I get 4. So now this is in the correct form, and I want to stress to you guys, if you do not feel confident in your completing the square um, capabilities, please come talk to me because that is a huge deal this chapter. You guys really need to know how to do that so I can give you some additional resources to help you out. Okay, so based on this, I can determine that the center of this circle is 3, 1. Okay, notice in my x parenthesis, I'm taking the opposite of that number, and that is our x coordinate. In the y parenthesis, I'm taking the opposite of that number, and that is our y coordinate. Our radius is the square root of that constant, so our radius is 2. Okay, so I'm going to graph this by hand, so it's not going to be super pretty, but that is okay. Okay, so I'm going to go to 3, 1 and put a point. Now, we know a radius means that from 3, 1, it's going out 2 in every direction. Now, it's tough for us to do some directions, but it's pretty easy for us to go up, down, to the left, and to the right. And then I'm going to go ahead and connect those points. That was a horrendous circle. But hopefully we can see 
exactly how we're going to do this and it'll be easier once we actually have a real graph that is to scale. The final skill we're going to do here, it tells us to identify the center and radius of the following circles. Okay, so for A, we see x squared plus y squared equals 64. Um, I notice here this is in the correct form because we don't have an extra x or y, but we don't see any parentheses, so it's like that it is x minus 0 and y minus 0. So in this case, my center is 0, 0. My radius is the square root of 64, which is 8. Okay, finding a radius and a center is that simple and straightforward when it's in the right order, when it's in the right form. Okay, B, x plus 9 squared plus y plus 1 squared equals 36. So our center would be negative 9, negative 1. My radius is the square root of 36, which is 6. Now, if we had a radius that was not an integer, let's say this said like 10, our radius would be radical 10. And if we were just giving an answer, we didn't have to graph or anything, leaving it as radical 10 would be great. Now, obviously, I don't know how to graph radical 10, so if I was graphing the problem, I would need to convert that into a decimal and determine exactly how far to go in each direction. So, this was a quick recap on circles. Um, I would encourage you guys, if you're struggling on one aspect of this, make sure you definitely do a lot of those um, problems from that section in the homework. So, have a great rest of your day.